everybody. It's Pat Love from EXP Realty. I'm here today with Megan Fallenbach. Megan is an actor and also an acting coach. She works with my oldest son, Bobby. So that's why she's here today. Thank you for uh, meeting me on Zoom, Megan. You're welcome, Pat. My absolute pleasure as always. Okay, I'm looking forward to asking these questions that I don't know the answers to, which is nice. You know, I know, I know some things about you, but not everything. So <laughs> let's, let's get started. Um, how long have you been an actor? So the, the I could tell you the long answer, the short answer. I'd say I have been an actor when I, I, I got the bug when I was Peter Pan in my school play when I was 11 years old. Um, and, and then I started, I got into it professionally a couple of years later, and that was commercials and a bit of modeling and booked my first movie when I was 16. So those are sort of the, the markers of the beginning of my acting career. Um, I went on to sort of, uh, fight against being an actor after doing this movie. I, I actually played a concentration camp survivor, came back to Canada with my head shaved and, uh, how people sort of how kids were, you know, with me being in the media and on TV and in catalogs as a model and doing these commercials, I really fought against, um, really fought against that as well as the really inconsistent lifestyle, which I'm sure we'll get into uh, later on in this meeting. But um, yeah, so I took a big, a bit of time to just kind of try to have a normal career, one that has a stable income. Um, and I went off to, uh, I, jo I joined the circus for a little while and I became a professional water skier and went all over the world. And that was just after getting a degree in anthropology and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And it was actually, well, I was living in Thailand, um, watching, I was watching a movie in Thailand and I thought I cannot watch, I can't, I can't not do this. I can't not at least try. So, um, yeah, sometimes we take a little bit of time away from what we want to do to come back to what we want to do. Anyway, so that's what I, as I basically came back in sort of my mid twenties and, and really became a professional. And that was, you know, that was a while ago and I've been doing it, you know, ever since haven't stopped, haven't looked back. So I'd say that's, that's the answer right there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I was going to say, when did you know that's what you wanted to do? But you answered that question already. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say Peter 11 Pan. years old, Peter Pan. There you go. There you go. Okay. So do you prefer, I know you do a lot of voiceover work. Do you prefer that over um, live action? If that's what you call it, live action. Yeah. Sometimes. Um, yeah. That's what we call it. Um, I sometimes do, you know, cause sometimes like live action can really, when you book something that's shooting, uh, you know, as a, especially as a mom now, now that I'm a mom with kids and moving parts all over the place, as you know, you know, we've got, it's not just our li lives and our schedules, it's our kids, it's their, their birthdays, their school projects, their graduations, whatever. Um, it's, it's a lot sometimes when it's suddenly like you book something, you've got to go somewhere, these are the dates, you know, and there's no flexibility within that that's I'm I'm basically I'm owned by production for the next whatever time period the shoot is um so in that way I, I sometimes prefer voice it's just it's it's also very immediate you have to be somewhere tomorrow at 10 a.m or so, you know so that is a bit that can also be very disruptive in that way but um you know, if my kids have a dentist appointment, I can no longer take them to the dentist appointment if I've got to be at a voice job, but it's one day. It's not multiple days, but do I like it better? I like it all. I mean, that's the one thing about this business is, you know, it's for me, it's storytelling. It's being a storyteller. Um, I love the different mediums of it. It makes my days very different. Um, every day is a little bit different. And I think that's, that's why I kind of ended up doing this. I, I, I never, I resisted sort of this nine to five and the idea that every day would be sort of the same, the same place. I'm sure the it grind. isn't. I'm the sure grind. the grind. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's all a grind. And this mm -hmm. is part of it. It's all a grind. It just, it just looked, every grind looks a little bit different, but yeah. work is work. It's called work yeah. for a reason. You know, if we, <laughs> if we <laughs> well, that's what they say. If you do something you love, then you never work a day in your life. Right. That's, the that's quote. what they say. And I do love what I do. And absolutely. Like when I get a big, when I get a live action job or a voice job or a, an animation job, um, it's the best. That's what I want to do. I, it's my favorite thing. I love to perform. I, I feel like that's what I, it is my passion. It's what I love doing. 
Um, it's better than any job I've ever had for sure. But, uh, you know, still long days, you know, you can be on set and you start at 6 a.m. and you're still waiting to do your last shot at 12 midnight, <laughs> you know, and it's the money shot. It's like the big scene. <laughs> you know? Of course, of course. Well, then it was so, worth the wait. You know, well, yeah, worth the wait. <laughs> Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty of the business. And um, we were talking about this before we hit record, that the world has an attitude that every actor is super, super wealthy, and they, they make lots of money, and they're not uh, struggling at all. I guess maybe some movies show struggling actors working in in restaurants and stuff like that. But most of the world thinks, oh, yeah, they have houses everywhere, and this, that, and the other thing. But I know Megan. <laughs> has has a coaching business and she is very gifted in working with uh, neurodiverse people which is what my son is and she's been a wonderful addition to his life so I'd like to talk to Megan I'd like her to share a bit more about her coaching business and maybe some success stories or heartwarming stories that some of your clients have had so over to you Okay, great. And you're, you're bang on as far as, you know, not all of us actors have houses everywhere <laughs> living the life of, you know, throwing money around. I wish, I sure wish. Um, I always thought maybe that might happen, but that's definitely not why I got into it. Um, yeah. So as an actor, we do have to take other things, you know, yeah, a lot of us were servers and I, and my ego definitely got in the way when I was in my younger days, when someone was, Oh, you're an actor. So where do you serve? I'd be like, Oh gosh, I hate that question. Like, <laughs> that I'm not successful or something. And, uh, I just made me crazy. And now when I mentor, you know, young up and coming actors, I say, do you know, it feels good to work. It feels good to go into an audition and not be desperate, you know, needing that job to pay your rent. You need to have something going on because this, you know, we can't control outcome. We can't control whether we get the jobs. All we can control is our amazing auditions. And, and so now I kind of just am a professional auditioner. And then if I get the job, that's, that's the added bonus. And yay, maybe I can breathe a little bit more. Um, but the coaching, yes, I got into the coaching kind of after my kids. So, you know, acting for me, I've, I've, I've done okay. You know, I've been able to sort of make a living sort of for the last, like when I, when I kind of got into it and I think I booked my first series, I had a recurring role on something and got some guest stars um, in, in the first few years of working. And I thought I'd right away just quit all my serving, my serving job. And I was still kind of water skiing a little bit doing water ski shows on the side at, the, at that time. Also always a performer. Um, but uh, you know, I, and then I, and then I start, started to have, and then I have babies. And so that was, they were sort of my, my part-time job or my full-time job, you know, when <laughs> yeah, I was more than full-time job. Yeah, more than absolutely. But you know what I mean? It was kind of hard. I can be an actor and a full-time mom and have a serving job. It was just, it was a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but once my kids uh, became a little bit more independent, I thought, you know, I can't, I, I can't just be waiting for these jobs to come anymore. I need to grab some control. Um, so I really did some soul searching as to, to what I wanted to do. And, and, you know, one of the things that I realized, I realized that as an actor, one of the reasons why I became an actor was back to that Peter Pan story, um, was the reaction to the kids in the playground after I did what was Peter Pan on that, and that school play run of three shows, just to see them really, the kids really light up and, 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 and maybe, you know, role play Peter Pan and Wendy in the park or just act like Peter Pan or it just, they, 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 they changed. They became their confidence. Uh, they, they, I could see confidence elevated. I could see something change. And I thought, wow, this is a great medium for helping people change and, and maybe develop confidence or, or, or make a change in their life that will, might be for the better for them. And so when I really thought about it, what was, what I, 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 I considered going back into psych psychology, because that's actually what I studied as well as anthropology. I thought, you know, coaching is pretty cool. I, I looked into it and I, I took a course and I was like, this is really cool. This is forward motion. This is about, okay, so yes, you, these are the cards you've been dealt with. Now what? Instead of trying to deal with all the, you know, the stuff that, you know, we all have stuff. We all, whether it's a crappy childhood or a teacher that made you feel really badly or, a, you know, a, a home circumstance that's not great or, or being neuro, you know, diverse, being given that candid, that card that makes it trickier to live in this world. Mm -hmm. 
you know, yeah, that's, that's the reality. Now what, what can you do with that? And, and that is what, that's what I realized. Like I can, it's kind of not my, it's not different in a way than, um, than acting in that I'm, I'm helping people as opposed to through my, my work on screen, um, or with my voice, it's, it's, it's one-on-one -on -one helping people grow their big, beautiful wings and fly as far and high as they can and set goals. And, and, and so when, you know, with working with the neurodiverse community, like your son, Bobby, who, you know, that just kind of fell into my lap because of my amazing, a uh, couple of amazing roles that I've, I've played in the animation world. And a lot of kids, um, you know, diverse kids really love animation, as you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so they just, you know, they just sort of came to me and because I love people so much and I, and I want so badly, I'm, you're going to make me cry with this question. because it's like, <laughs> it is my passion. It is my passion, you know, to just help people be their best selves and, 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 and see that in themselves and see how great they are, despite all the hard stuff mm -hmm. um, that they can still be and be loved and love themselves and, and trust themselves and use those amazing superpowers, like the neurodiverse superpowers for everything that's hard, be it maybe high, high anxiety. Um, you know, I always ask a, a new client who, who is neurodiverse, like, what, what are your superpowers? What are you really good at? you know, oh, I can read something and, and remember it forever. I'm like, that's awesome. Like not many people are able to do that, you know? So really seeing your superpowers. And I think that goes across the, the board with people in general. And I work with everybody, anybody who wants to work with me, I, I want to work with them because I love people so much. Um, and I generally connect with a lot of people quite easily because I love people so much. Um, and so that really, I'm just seeing when people just recognize their, their own strengths and, and then it really, that's a, that's a big deal. So, you know, um, yeah, I can't remember if there the next part of the question was, what are some of the wins, some of the wins yeah. that I've had, some of the heartfelt wins? Well, I, you know, every, I think there's always a win, but I'd say, for instance, I had a, I had a client come to me at a big job interview, he's neurodiverse. And I know he doesn't have, he doesn't have a lot of money. And I said to him, you know, why don't, why don't we have a coaching session before your, 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 your job interview? And we'll just get you feeling really good about it. And you don't have to pay me, but if you get the job, you can pay me with your first pay paycheck. And uh, he was like, oh, God, so on board. He was so excited. So we had this really big pump up session and he was, he felt really good, took a lot of notes. He we really got into it. And he really thought about himself and he was really excited about his job interview. And he, by good golly, Miss Molly, he got, he got the job and, and he sent me a, he sent me some money after his paycheck, first paycheck. And it was awesome. And then what was even cooler after all this, I, he ended up letting me know that um, because of COVID, they had to cut back, he lost his job, but he was, he was still very inflated. He, he said, but it's okay. You know, they don't deserve me if they didn't want to keep me, I'm going to get a better job. So you see what coaching does is it's more than just in the media. It's the filling up and, and, and because we can't control what's on the outside in the world. And we really do have to love ourselves first. And because we're going to get hit, we're going to get the, hit. you know, it's, it's life is up, down and all around. And so we have to really love ourselves and trust ourselves so that we can go on to live our most fulfilling lives, hopefully on our terms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so, I have. Yeah, I have to say that uh, the difference you've made in my son's life is massive. He, the not one part of him, even though he has huge anxiety, he has so much confidence uh, on camera and talking to people. And he will, you know, if he walks into a, a group of people, he becomes the center of attention immediately. And being totally not that way, I know that this gives a false sense that I have, I'm super calm, cool and collected on camera and all that, but that is not me. I've just, uh, once again, as Megan says, you know, the more you do stuff, the more confidence you get. And I think that that's the difference her, her coaching has done for my son. And like I said, before, before Megan, we were really floundering to um, support his desire to be an actor. So I thank you for that.
Oh, he walked into my life at that fan expo, very eager to meet me and, and with a lot of personality and a lot of confidence, that kid. So he's, <laughs> he does, it's definitely in him. Um, but I, I thank you for that. I really, uh, Bobby is, you know, he's my, he's my Bobby. Yeah. He always yeah. will be. And it takes a village, right? Like I have a really great relationship with you and other parents of of because you need the support, you know, he can listen to you as a mom. Um, but he knows at the end of the day, you're going to, you're going to love him forever. It's, so me being there for you as a supporter and, and knowing what he, you know, what your goals are for him, I can help you with that. That's such a, that's, I love that. And I, and mm -hmm. as a mom, mom to mom, yeah. you know, it's, it's a challenge being a mom anyway. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you're, when you're, when you have a kid that has extra, extra needs and extra things, like I'm sure you didn't really imagine, you know, no. not being able to leave your house <laughs> but, <laughs> when you've got, you know, but, but this is what you, <laughs> but what you brought for me is, you know, I, I suddenly had to become an expert in the acting business and I know nothing about that. And that's what Megan has supported me. I, if I have, if Bobby's got an audition and I don't know what the words mean or, you know, she's right there. So, yeah, you know, right. if you have, if you have a, a person who's needing that kind of support, who's interested in that business, or even who just needs some confidence, she's the one to call. So I will tag her information so that if you watch this you and you're interested you can reach out to her so Yay. i'm going to ask uh one final question and it's just not even about acting it's just uh what what sort of things do you like to do in your free time Ooh. It, little that there is <laughs> yeah um for me free time is all about nature these days like i i like to go out for runs or walks being with my kids you know, that is, that's the best if we can go out. I, I like to be out and about. I like, I'm an act, I'm a very active person. So if it's a bike ride or just going for a, a, a big walk in our neighborhood, we'll do, we've even done like day trips in the city day trips. So we walk from our house to the CN Tower. I live in Toronto. So we do massive day trips, um, just going on walks and hikes uh, and getting together with friends. Love that. COVID's been very weird for that. Um, love hanging out having a glass of wine with friends. That's a big, good, fun thing. Um, I'm really into surfing. Can't do that very often, but that's definitely my, my challenge. My recent challenge is learning how to surf. Okay. Uh, where, where do you do that in Ontario? <laughs> yeah, you can do it on the lakes. You know, we could get, you can sort of drive to the great lakes and, and because I think there are some, you know, there's some surfing that happens on I don't know, Lake Erie, but I don't do that. I go, I go somewhere south or, or to Hawaii. I went, I went to Hawaii and Costa Rica are the two places that I've been to learn how to surf. So, mm -hmm. you know, family, you know, family trips there, Costa Rica is where we do have a destination. Um, we are planning to go there again. And I, hopefully I think next Christmas, I, we're just waiting for the pandemic stuff to just get normalized yeah, let's... next <laughs> holiday season. Um, mm -hmm. We should be okay. Um, yeah. And that's, uh, anything, I guess that's, yeah, that's what I like to do. I don't really do art or anything like that. What do you like to do in your free time? Oh, you little brat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say, well, I'm a tech, uh, tech junkie. I love to learn new stuff. That's new tech stuff that's come out and, and the other thing I'm into pandemic wise, the pandemic has changed my hobbies completely. So during the pandemic, I got very into genealogy and I, oh. I opened a lot of closets filled with skeletons that if my ancestors, like my grandmother or my mother were still alive, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, and DNA, DNA is uh, a wonderful thing. And a lot of people have made great connections and great stories. I've, I've, you know, they're the stories of, of your ancestors are what what you get told are just a story okay you get someone's interpretation or what someone wanted you to find out but when you have dna and you reach out to these third fourth fifth six cousins and all of that you find out a lot more about you know they'll tell you little tidbits or you know i discovered what got gave me the bug and I won't talk much longer. What gave me the bug was a friend of mine. She was on Ancestry and she said, oh, she, because she's adopted, she's, she's doing two separate family trees, her birth 
family tree and her adoptive family tree. And so she said, well, you know, you should sign up for it. And I'm going, oh, I don't want to spend that money. You know, that seems kind of ridiculous. And so she said, well, sign into my account. And so I signed into her account. And I mean, I didn't even know who, you know, much about my great grandparents, because, you know, my grandfather on my dad's side was born in 1875. Uh, that's my grandfather wow. that's not yeah mm -hmm. because wow. it was, yeah well because um he was he was not young when uh he got married to my grandmother she was 18 and she had her five children over a span of about 20 years when was so, she born she was born in um 1891 mm -hmm. yeah and so you know my dad was born in 1924 and his youngest brother was born in 1927, but his oldest brother was born in like 1911. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and I am the youngest grandchild. So that's mm -hmm. why the, the big spans anyway. So I didn't know that much. And, and so I just keyed in a couple of people's names and, oh my goodness. So my great, great grandfather came up his picture, his picture from when he, he came from Germany, he immigrated to Ellis Island in the States and he um his picture that was posted by a, a cousin several how many cousins out i don't know i don't remember i talked to her on you know through email but um he fought for the north in the civil war and so his picture was him in this uniform that you know we've only seen in movies you know he, i'm thinking oh my goodness so that gave me the bug so that was my pandemic bug and uh, there's not enough time here to tell the whole story, but that is what got me going. So I That's know that amazing. And who are you <laughs> going to cast me in your story <laughs> as who do I get to play in your in this this genealogy of yours? Well, my great great grandmother, there's pictures of her and she was quite frightening looking in these pictures. <laughs> so won't be will so you cast me as her? <laughs> no, I won't do that. I won't do that. <laughs> anyway, I I so appreciate Megan taking the time today to share a bit about uh, her career and her interest and um, her love of every interesting person that exists. Oh, I love that. It's true. Every person by nature is interesting. So mm -hmm. it's true. I do love the people. I love the people. Well, thank you, Pat, so much. It's so great that you're giving back to the community like this. And and uh, yeah, get get in touch if anyone needs some help in the confidence department. Let me let me help you help yourself That's get there perfect. because we all deserve to live life on our terms. And and uh, I came upon this amazing quote uh, by Mary Oliver, poet. And it's uh, you've seen it, Pat. It's on the bottom of all my emails. And in this, it's called the the poem is called Summer Day. And this one particular excerpt is, tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Yeah, that's perfect. And everybody should. And that think to about me, their life that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah. so great. So keep on living your one wild and precious life, Pat. Yes. And you too, Megan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.